So the risk you run here is they're listening and they go, okay, I don't like this. Well, you don't want to give them the option to click off. By the time they make that decision, you want to be going into something else. And so this one runs a little long. It's like they might think like this, the whole thing is just this. And they're like, all right. And they might go to someone else. So you want to be switched before they even have an opportunity to leave you. You want to be going into something else. So this should be about eight to 10 seconds. So you really could leave it right. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Brian from Ridgeback Productions, and I help beginning voiceover talents grow their business and generate income. And in this video, we're doing just that, baby. We're doing it. We are doing it up proper light. So what we got going on in this video is this is a uh, clip. It's a sample of a one-on-one -on -one consultation that I did with a talent that I've been working with named Nick. He's pretty awesome. We uh, started off just like most, most that come to me, they come to me through the Fiverr gig review. And if you would like a Fiverr gig review, I'd be happy to do that. Check out the link in the description below. It's uh, just one of the many services that I offer to help you out and grow your business. Anyways, okay, so he came to me through that Fiverr gig review. And then as things lead into, they usually always lead into a uh, consultation because really that's where the that's where the good stuff happens that's where we get to work one on one together to grow your business we dig into your gig or whatever you want but 9 times out of 10 I hate math most talents want to sit and look at their gig together and go over how can we make this better so you know really the difference is the gig review if you've seen videos of me doing it there's a ton of them on this channel I go through it and I just give you like the quick like psh, 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 of what I think you can improve on, you know, take notes because there's a lot of good stuff in there. But if when we get on a consultation together, that's where the good stuff happens because we actually get to dialogue. You get to ask me questions. We get to talk about it. I get to ask you questions to get clarification on what you're trying to do. So I can give you some suggestions on how to make it better. We actually can pick apart your demo and make it better. We go through all the different uh, segments of your gig. If that's what you want to do, most want to do that. There's a lot of value in that. And what you're going to see in this video is Nick and I working together. And really, I mean, I think it goes like 15 minutes and it's only strictly on his demo talking about how we can make the demo better, my suggestions, what sucks. And if you watch the channel, you know, I, I there is no shame in my game. I will happily and, and gladly let you know what sucks. How rude because that's how you're going to improve. I'll probably profusely apologize because I apparently do that too much, but um, I do like it. I do like ripping your gigs apart and having fun with you. And uh, we do that. And Nick's a good guy. Nick's a great guy. Nick and I have uh, been working together for a while now. And uh, we we email frequently. We talk. And uh, he's just an all-around good guy. And he's super talented. And, uh, you, well, you'll see. So this is Nick and I in our one-hour uh, consultation. You're only getting a little sneak peek into it. Maybe we'll... Maybe we'll release more of it. If you are interested in seeing more of it after you watch it, let me know in the comment section um, down below and uh, maybe we'll, we'll release more of these or I can release more of me working with talents. Either way, I'm sure it's going to be helpful. You're going to get a lot out of it. Without further ado, here is Nick and I in our one hour consultation. Here we go. So one of your questions that you were asking me was, or you were telling me a story about logging into Fiverr. Fiverr sent you like a notification that you hadn't been logged in in a while. Is that what I'm understanding? That's correct. It said something like, I believe it said something about maybe deleting my account. So I was just concerned. Maybe they want me to log in on a regular basis to keep me to the top or to keep me top of mind from their perspective. I don't know. Yeah, no, that's very likely. So Fiverr definitely favors active users. So they want someone that's on or on frequently enough. You don't have to be on all the time, but you they they favor active users. So they will bump you up as far as like search ratings and stuff based on how often you're on because you know they're ultimately they are a company and so they want to make money and they want their buyers to be able to go on and contact sellers. So sellers that are not active and are are not on their account very often, 
They just don't show up as high in search results because Fiverr views them as, well, they're probably not going to be able to service the buyer as quickly as we'd want. So they, they put buyers that are frequently on higher in the search. Does that make sense? That totally makes sense. Yep. Yeah. So I can see in your little thing that's popping up that your average response time is two hours. Um, so one way that you can maximize that is anytime someone sends you a message, even if you have like an automatic reply, you want to um, manually reply to them as quickly as you possibly can. Even if it's something that says, looking this over, I'll get back to you soon or a thumbs up or something. You want Fiverr to know that you took the time to actually put something and it doesn't matter if it's a smiley face. Is two hours a long time? Uh, well, it's not a long time, but the, the lowest you can, the fastest you can have is one hour. And it's, um, that's ultimately what you'd be shooting for. And so time, like while you're sleeping and stuff like that, that doesn't count. It doesn't matter if you miss a message while you're sleeping, but you want to try and respond as quickly as you possibly can. And that's kind of like one of the, honestly, that's one of the main complaints about Fiverr is it's like, it's a game you have to play. And if you don't play the game, you don't get rewarded. You don't get to show up as high in searches. Your success score that they now have isn't as high. It's, you know, Fiverr wants you to play the game. And if you don't play the game, you kind of get penalized. I hate this game. And it's up to you whether you want to care or not, you know? Okay. So when I'm at my desk uh, during the day, maybe log into Fiverr and just let it sit there, maybe open up a window and just be observant of it while I'm doing other things. I would, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. If, if it's possible to have a Fiverr tab open on your computer, I would, because then it does two things. It shows Fiverr that you're active and it also shows buyers that you're available because they it puts a little green dot on you. Like mm -hmm. I'd probably have to refresh the page, but right now you don't have that green dot, which means you're either not on Fiverr, which is fine, but it's showing that you're away. And if you have an open tab, it shows you're there. And buyers are more likely to contact you if you're there because they want to actually talk to talk to somebody. So it helps you because okay. Fiverr sees you're active and buyers will see you're there. And chances are they, you know, you're more likely to get contacted if you're available. Cool. So this is the second time that um, we've looked at or that I've looked at your gig and you have made some changes and we're going to kind of go over that. So the very first thing that pops up, let me refresh just to make sure that I'm seeing this correctly. This is your thumbnail. So if I was a buyer, I would see that it says KYMC 89.7 FM. My first thought is this is a radio station gig. Is this a radio station gig? Meaning um, like, are you no. selling advertising on the radio? Or are you selling some sort of radio service? I was on the radio, so I basically did a sample or took a sample of when I was on the radio. Um, nice. and, maybe, and I thought I had my picture on the first slide. So maybe I just need to either change that slide or something. Yeah. So what I would do is um, I think this is a video. Let's check if I remember correctly. You do have a video. OK, so you do have a picture. OK, so we can fix this. This should be the thumbnail. Correct. Fiverr has randomly selected your thumbnail and you can fix that. Are you, are you in front of a computer where you could do it now, or you just want me I, to tell you how to do it? Uh, I am. I can do it now. Okay. Yeah. If you log into your Fiverr account, there you go. Okay. So go to your little drop down uh, menu on the right side. Analytics. Uh, no, go down, down, down to the right, to the right, that click that click edit. Perfect. All right. So then now there's your tabs right there. The you have overview pricing. Click on gallery for um the gallery. Yep. Um okay, so there's your video. Hover over the, the picture. Yep. Okay, you see the pencil, not the trash can. Click the pencil. All right. So this is where you get to click uh set your picture. So you're gonna click uh not yet. So oh, go sorry. go up to the video. Yep. Click play and then get ready to hit pause. There you go. Hit pause there. Now hit set preview. Yep. Now close it. Cool. So essentially what you do is Fiverr lets you pick any spot in your video that you want to be the thumbnail. And because you made your video with the thumbnail in the video, which is what you should do, you just go to the spot where your thumbnail is usually at the beginning. Some people put it at the end. I put mine at the end. 
just go to where the thumbnail is, pause it, and set that as the preview. Perfect. So now if you hit save and you go ahead and refre it. refresh the page, it'll show up. Ta-da. Nice. Yeah. All right, cool. That's how it should be. So if I refresh, that's how it should look. So that's a big move right there because already you have a better thumbnail, which shows what you do. Um, you're a deep American voiceover. That is fine. You don't need to fix this thumbnail. If I was, if you do fix it, I you don't need assertive and compelling. I would almost take up, take that real estate and um, put like the words deep American voiceover as bigger. So they're easier to see. Okay. And then you can even add mail. It could say like deep American male voiceover or not, but you don't necessarily need assertive and compelling. And those words could take up more space. So right now your picture is taking up one third of the picture, which is ideally what you want. So then two okay. thirds should be text and you can fill that up. Deep American voiceover, nice and big and bold. Because if you look at the buyer's view, if I scroll down, we'll see some samples. These are even bigger than what they see. The, the, the buyer gallery, it's like four across. So the thumbnails are really small. So if you picture your thumbnail as small, it makes the font even harder to read when it's small. So you want picture nice and big, font nice and big as well. Now your demo, when I started your demo, there was some dead air. So you working in radio, you know what dead air is. The thumbnail, when you put that thumbnail in, I, don't, I think that that includes that, I believe. It or does. I... It does. So the options are you put the thumbnail at the end or you only put the thumbnail in there for about a second. So because okay. what happens is the buyer clicks on this. Okay, I guess nothing's playing. Will they go to something else? I don't know, but there it goes. So it, it does start. So I just try and minimize that. You don't have to redo your demo. It's just more for like anyone else that's like watching this right now. Just you want to minimize dead air, jump right into it, right from the jump. So you can have your thumbnail at the beginning, but your thumbnail only needs to be like one second, just enough time that you can pause it and find your thumbnail. It doesn't have to be anything else. Okay. So this is about 19 seconds. Really, these should be about 8 to 12 seconds because really buyers have, have said many times they know within 5 to 10 seconds whether they like a voice. So the risk you run here is they're listening and they go, okay, I don't like this. Well, you don't want to give them the option to click off. By the time they make that decision, you want to be going into something else. And so this one runs a little long. It's like... They might think like this, the whole thing is just this. And they're like, all right. And they might go to someone else. So you want to be switched before they even have an opportunity to leave you. You want to be going into something else. So this should be about eight to 10 seconds. So you really could leave it right. Let's see here. Done. And then you go into the next one. So that's a, that, that'd be a 10 second spot because your thumbnail was, was two seconds. So that's, that's a, that's a good natural spot. I thought it might be good to have the tagline piece. So I don't know if maybe edit the first eight seconds out. Because yeah, if I'm buyer, I'll say I'm Ford, right? You'd want, um, I like to hear the person say Ford tough or, right? Or have a Coke and a smile or whatever uh, their their advertising slogan is, right? So yeah. I, that's why I thought that having that in there would be important. And so, yeah. So in, in, in voiceover, they call that billboarding. So Yes, a lot of companies want to hear your billboard. They want to hear you say Zar Clothing and then the tagline. That's fine. Whatever you decide to do, you want this to be 8 to 12 seconds. Wherever you want to put it in, you can put it in. So if you want to keep the brand okay. name in there for the sake of you want a company to hear what it sounds like when you say a brand, then good. Mm -hmm. If you're trying to leave it okay. in because you want you think a buyer is going to be impressed that you're narrating for Czar Clothing, which I agree, Czar Clothing is great clothing. I know who they are and they're awesome, but I don't think a buyer is going to hire you because you because Czar hired you to do this. Like you did a great job for their commercial, and I agree that you did good. But you saying Czar Clothing isn't going to get you hired if you're trying to impress them with the clothing line. But if you want them to hear you say a brand, and this is what I sound like when I say a brand and a tagline, I agree with that. That's, that is smart. Okay. Even if it's a Chevy commercial, like 
buyers just aren't impressed by brands, I guess. Like if you did a Chevy commercial and you're like the Chevy, you know, you know, 1500, blah, 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 blah. It's like, I don't think they hire you. Oh, wow. He did. He did a Chevy commercial, but Mm -hmm. you're right. Some, some brands do want to hear what it sounds like, you know, when you give their tagline. So I don't know if that's conflicting information, but let's hear your radio. Okay. I gotcha. So that's why you have the radio station there. That makes sense. Okay. So even that's, that's kind of long too. So, so we get into it right here and then get out right there, fall in Missouri and then go into the next one. So you're just showing that you can, that you do, you did a commercial. Now you're doing some, um, radio imaging or, you know, whatever someone could hire you for. I mean, that's more DJ work that you're demoing, but I get it. You know, raid, they could hire you for radio imaging. I wouldn't include any of this. Done. And then you get out right there. I can tell you're going to keep going with this, but mm-hmm. you know, eight to 10 seconds, these are all natural spots where you can get out. I hear what you sound like for radio. I hear what you sound like commercial. I hear what you're sounding like or this could be like an e-learning or something. This is great. This is probably my favorite one, actually. This sounds the most natural of all of yours. Oh, really? Yep. Natural yep. in what way? It sounds conversational. It almost sounds like you're telling me about this rather than like, so your Zar clothing one doesn't sound conversational. It sounds like a narrator, tell, but that's fine. You know, I, I can imagine maybe when when czar hired you to do this that's probably the tone they wanted and it's great but it's not conversational so you have a narrator then you have radio imaging and then this is the one that sounds it just sounds like you it just sounds like you're just talking and a lot of buyers that's what they're looking for they just want the natural just conversational the guy next door even though you're talking about something that i have no idea what you're talking about it still sounds like you're talking to me as a friend even though so i have would no you idea maybe put this to the forefront I'd almost put this as the front. Yep. I'd put this as the front and I'd switch them. I'd put this in the front and I'd almost put, I don't know. I'd almost put czar clothing. I'd do this one. Well, see, you're going to do more. You're going to have more because you're going to tighten these up. You're going to be able to have like five or six of these. So I I'd, I'd start with this one. It is, it is without music. So it does give them a very clear indication of what my voice is without anything in the background. Right. Um, so where you know the, the radio thing has some music in the background, and obviously the czar clothing has some stuff in the background, so that would be really good, I think, from that perspective. They can just hear me by myself, and then they can hear it with music or whether whatever. So I think that would give them a good, clean impression, um, by getting you know, listen, without music. Yeah, that's smart. That's actually that's a really good point. So the um. It's like raw audio. So they're hearing just your voice and the rest of them are produced. But having produced audio, that's, I mean, that is a good idea. So a buyer can hear what you're going to sound like on produced audio with the music bed. So, um, yeah, I I mean, you're going to end up adding two or three more to these. But yeah, I would start with your, um, with this one, the e-learning or whatever one you want to call this. Okay. Cool. All right. But I do like that. It's a video demo reel. That's, that's good. So eventually when you do redo it, I would put the thumbnail at the end so that you don't have this dead air. So it can come right in. That's what you want. I mean, I know so you're eliminate that from the, from the, yeah, eliminate that slide on the front. I mean, I, I have it uh, where I can edit that, that video. I can go and really move everything around, right? Move the audio. And, yeah. You and want it to come right in. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, so that's your demo reel. And then this is a demo, but I don't see what it is. So you already have a Zar, a Zar clothing line or a Zar clothing demo. I wouldn't have another one. Okay. These Get were just else. It's crazy. So it's kind of a different approach to what I did for Zar clothing. That's fine. I wouldn't use the brand then. Okay. Or, or use a clip that doesn't have Zar clothing because then. I've already, as a buyer, I've already heard that you worked for Czar Clothing. I would just, I mean, I understand if you're trying to give a different tone or different pacing, that's fine. But I wouldn't use Czar Clothing. I'd use something else. Okay. Yeah. And use the, I mean, you have a, this is a whole new demo. So 
it could be longer than eight eight seconds. You can give like an audiobook sample or any other genre, like other genres that you're interested in. I've heard a commercial, I've heard an e-learning, and then I heard like a radio imaging. If you're into doing IVR or audiobook or promotion or any documentary or anything, that's where these other demos could be put in if you wanted. Okay. So that's yeah. another Zark clothing. Uh, just because I didn't have some anything other, other things prepared. So that's why I put those in there. But I Yeah, can... that's fine. Yep. So we're gonna all 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 three of those demos, switch them out. I'd I'd put different different genres. Just you decide what you want to do. And if in in so far, so we have commercial, we have radio imaging, and we have e-learning. If one of those in particular you really want to emphasize, like maybe, you know, I like your e-learning. So maybe you want to do an a different e-learning, not that same company, certainly not that same demo, but have another demo of e-learning. And it doesn't have to be a demo reel. It could just be you talking about something else in the industry. If that, you know, if you know software or whatever, because I know you're, you're familiar with this area sure. of, so then, you know, cybersecurity or whatever it is, do a different one on it. Yeah, I have another one on, on um, cloud um, computing, Kubernetes, if you know yeah. what that is. Um, I, I can uh, probably incorporate that. I just have to edit it, I believe. Awesome. So that was Nick in a tiny little glimpse into our one hour session that we did together. And that was just the, the demo part. We dig so much deeper. What can you say about Nick? The guy's a gem. He's a freaking gem. A true talent, just like everybody I work with. I am so thankful for that. If you are interested in working with me, either a Fiverr gig review, which you can get by clicking in the link below, or a one-hour consultation, you can also find that link below. I'm here for you. I want to help you out. If you can do me a favor, take a quick second and like, subscribe. Maybe even share this content with somebody that you know. It helps the algorithm. It's all about helping you, spreading the word, helping voiceover talents get into the business because it is not really as hard as it seems. It seems like this giant mountain to overcome, and it's not. There's ways to get there. I can help you get there. There's other people that can help you get there. Just get help, whatever you're doing. Don't sit there and struggle and start. By all means, just start. Take that first step and get going. You can do it. Thanks for joining me today. If you have any suggestions on what you would like to see in the future, baby, then drop a comment below and let me know. Give me some ideas on what you would like to see, some content coming out of this channel. I'm here for you. I'm here to help you. I hope you're having a great day. We'll see you in the next video. See ya!